national hair scramble races draw fast riders from across the country in the chase for the national championship so grab your gear get ready to ride we're heading to idaho for the 1987 sun valley grand prix Idaho, like many other states in the Northwest, is truly a land of contrasts. Crossing into northern Idaho from Montana, we travel south through the scenic Sawtooth Range on our way to the Sun Valley area, which is located between the mountains and the upper parts of the state and the rugged volcanic and sage terrain of the lower southern areas. Here's the Snake River Canyon which made national news when Evil Knievel was going to sky cycle across it in the 1970s. The location of today's race is generally known for this type of action, the skiing of Sun Valley. But this weekend, we're here for a different sport, the Sun Valley Grand Prix. The race site this year has been moved a few miles to the town of Belleville, where Ron Dillon and Dirt Motorcycle Club have set up the only Grand Prix type national hair scramble in the country. Some residential streets, man-made obstacles, and the surrounding terrain make up the 16-mile course. We get right to some action with Saturday's race. Run for novices, antique bikes, and women racers. This long uphill caused a lot of bikes to overheat, so a stop at the top doesn't seem like a bad idea. Especially when confronted with the steep, off-camber, wooded descent on the other side. of down timber will add to your problems, as this unlucky woman racer shows here. Being in the back part of the course, the water crossings can be taken pretty casually. But you can bet you gotta look stylish for your buddies in town. At least as stylish as you can possibly get. Saturday's race was Darren Fairbanks of Twin Falls, Idaho. But everyone was a winner 
because if nothing else, it meant getting out the old iron and just going riding for the day. After Saturday's race, also gave the local kids a chance to play in a national caliber mud hole. As well as giving the bigger kids a chance to play too. When the Wood River Fire Department, who had kindly filled the mud hole with water, then challenged a group of racers to a tug of war over that same mud hole. The racers promised to do better next year. Sunday morning, bright and early, brings out another group of riders to begin sitting up in the Bellevue City Park, which was also used as the start-finish area. A fair amount of rain the week before, and a cool, blustery morning, which again threatened rain, greeted the riders, but provided good race conditions. This view around the park shows the pit areas beginning to take shape. Here's Kevin Brown and Tim Shepard set up. And here Jeff Smith checks into the Can-Am team's area. Bob Motormouth Kavakas was here to announce today's activities. <laughs> shovel in hand, adding a few personal touches to the mud hole. Here are two of the pre-race favorites. On the mountain bike, two-time defending Sun Valley winner Ron Mailer. Talking here with Ketchum resident Danny Laporte, 1982 World Motocross champ. Kevin Brown brought his 250 Honda and a series point lead with him from Ohio. Here Ron Naylor gets ready to go. And Tony Hendon came from Kentucky to score some points today. Also Duke Dowell, Team Redneck Rooster, out of California. The 250 and open experts make up the front rows for the start. And they make a short sprint through the streets beginning their first of seven 16 mile long loops. Getting ready to take off here, but for the drag and drop. They're off. Number one, Chris Riddle gets off quickly, along with Hendon in row one. Row two features Mailer, Dowell, and number 19, Dan Lees. Third row has Dick Laporte, and number 20, Curtis Dice. Fourth wave features a trio of fast Ohio riders. Kevin Brown, Tim Shepard, and nearest to camera here, Scott Blessinger. Dusty winds blowing through the mountains, we take to the air for a very bumpy ride to see the racers as they head out of town. On the high-speed sagebrush line trails and roads that take them to the back parts of the course. Heading along the base of the mountains, they will soon be passing over. Tony Hendon has taken the lead, and Ron Naylor is moving up from a second row start. Okay, the racers are passing through Martin Canyon here and headed back for the long climb at the back part of the course at the Canyon of Death. Here we take a quick look back at town at some of the 119 racers who are starting the race. 
now we go back to the Canyon of Death. This is a two mile long climb that goes from 6,000 feet up to 7,900. And it's basically a one track climb over loose shale. Keep your speed up and you're okay. But you get out of shape, you back off, or get behind a slower rider, it can be really tough to get your momentum again. Okay, we're about 12 minutes into the race now. And it looks like we're catching up with the leaders. Here they are, it's, it's Tony Hendon and Ron Naylor. They're heading over the top of the mountain for the return trip down. So this is about the halfway point, headed back towards town. Naylor and Hinton have a good sized lead as we circle around here and catch the rest of the pack coming up the hill. You can see here how the single groove is really formed into the trail here. It makes it really, really tough to get around anybody else once you get behind them. Really keeping your speed up so you got your momentum is really important here. Here's a rider able to make a pass because he's doing just that, keeping up on the surface. Here we get our feet back on the ground. And you can see the overheating condition of the bikes as they're coming over the top of the hill. Really tough pull on the motors. Here comes another one. Lots of steam coming out. Several guys had to stop at the top just to let the motors cool off. They then head down into the woods on the back side of the mountain. This is kind of the halfway point, the turnaround point of the course. down the trail now on the back side of the mountain through the woods in what is called Sawmill Canyon. At the bottom of the canyon, the trail meets up with a dirt road that takes the racers back towards town. On the way, there are several small stream crossings that the riders make. Much like the trails heading out of town, the return trip covers trails and roads through sagebrush flats and up the hillsides. The leaders are getting closer to town now, where they have the option either of pitting or going on through the mud hole and continuing out of town. In the background there is Ron Naylor, who elected to go into his pit. The second rider in the town is Tony Hendon, who's the first rider through the mud hole today. Hendon's followed by Danny Laporte, who's riding fellow catcher resident Bob Hanna's 250 Suzuki today. <laughs> Fourth round of crew is Dan Lees in a 250 Yamaha, followed closely by Duke Dell. There's Duke Dell. Well, he's doing good. I mean, he's right up. Sixth place 
Catch the leaders on lap two. And it looks like Ron Naylor out front. His 406 KM seems to be pulling the hill really well. Hi, Ron. Coming up in second spot is Team KM's Tony Hender. Tony's out of Murray, Kentucky. It was another one of the Eastern riders who was able to come out to the West with a faster, more open terrain and have good results. In third comes Danny Laporte. Danny's been racing in Europe and Africa in long distance races recently. And just a couple days before this, returned to his home here in Idaho. down fourth spot is Idaho rider Dan Lees. Dan almost won the overall here in 1984, but a flat tire dropped him back to third. He still has several other class victories though, and would like to add the 250 expert title to that list. Next up is Duke Dowell. He was second 250 expert last year. He wants a class win this year, maybe an overall. Battle for six. 44, I don't know, but number 20 is Curtis Dice on 500 Honda. Last year, he won the uh, four-stroke class here. A change in classes. And hopefully a chance to move up even higher in the overalls. Number 27 here is Kevin Bethards out of Kent, Washington on Lopen Husky. And he's followed by Corky Mahan. He's 19 years old out of, out of Utah a top-rated motocrosser, flat tracker, and cross-country racer there. Very versatile rider. Next up is Jimmy Langar out of Boise, Idaho on a 250 Husky. Number 10 coming up the hill, the hill here is Idaho's Nick Teleria. And he's followed by John Georgette out of California, both on 250 Yamahas. Here's a line of riders led by Northern California racer Chris Riddle. On rear, number 29, and there's Scott Plessinger, who's gotten by Tim Shepard right there making a pass to keep him close. Number 92 is four-stroke Husky rider David Rhodes out of Washington. He's passed a lot of riders to get up to this far. Going down the hill on the other side, another four-stroke Husky rider, John Haker, multi-time six-day rider. Scott Kindler, who came up from Arizona with his ATK to ride here. He heads down Sawmill Canyon, and we'll go back to town to catch some action here. 
Here's local resident Dan Fasaint on his 250 Honda. We'll get some of this action here coming into town. Then we'll go over to the mud hole and see who's leading it, lap two. Okay, not stopping at the pits this time is Ron Naylor coming through on his Can-Am. He's got a good sized lead here and he heads back out of town. Showing up in second now is Danny Laporte. Looks like Tony Hennon must have pulled into the pits on this go around. Next up, okay, it's Dan Lees, Curtis Dice, and Duke Dowell all bunched up. Close racing there, good action. Okay, we show a few riders heading out of town now. Give you an idea of what it's like to head back towards the dirt part of the course. to get off the pavement is this right here. And here you can see Ron Naylor heading out as he zooms by another rider. And heads up the hill, out towards the trails, the fast trails and two track that go back to the uphill. Here's a ground level view of those same trails we saw from the helicopter on lap one. And you can see why the, why the average speeds are so high here. It's a fast course. Back to the top of the hill, we finally see Kevin Brown. Okay, Kevin's passing riders. We haven't seen him all race. And here he is, passing riders, way in the back. He must have had some problems. We're at the top of the hill here. We'll start getting down on the other side here, getting ready for lap three. Lap three, we're waiting for the leaders to come by. This shows you how steep and off camera this hillside is. But here comes Ron Naylor, he'll show us his form over it. No wasted motions for Ron. Coming down in second and more in his type of terrain, it's Tony Hendon. He's about a minute and a half back of Naylor at this point. Again, still holding third, it's Danny Laporte. And at fourth is Dan Lees. with Duke Dowell having gotten by Curtis Dice here on the third lap. So Dowell's moving up. It's still a tight race there for three, four, five. Kevin Behards is still holding his position. That's his Corky Mahan. And Jimmy Langard. Here's Ron Weir, followed closely by David Rhodes. And now here on the third lap, we see Scott Plessinger starting to move up. So he's getting towards the front. And here Jeff Smith, two-time 500 world motocross champ, and the rider to beat in the super senior class heads down Sawmill Canyon. 